Everybody knows that Christmas is celebrated on December 25th. But why is Christmas celebrated on December 25th? Matter of fact, why is Christmas even celebrated at all? What in the world does Christ Mass mean? Well, here's the story, or to be more accurate, here's the history behind it all. The word Christ Mass means the Mass of Christ, or Christ Mass for short. In the year 350 AD, Pope Julius I declared that Christ's birthday would be celebrated on December 25th. And this move was doubtlessly made by Pope Julius I for the purpose of making it a comfortable, seamless transition for the pagan Romans to convert to Christianity. From the time of Constantine the Great in 321 AD, changing the observance of the Christian Sabbath from the seventh day of the week, which is the Bible Sabbath, to the first day of the week, Sunday, which was the primary day of worship for the pagans to pay homage to the sun god, from that point forward, every possible compromise was made by the Roman church to adopt paganism, from adopting its various feasts to actually adopting the attire and the titles that adorned the pagan priesthood. The practices of paganism were baptized into the Roman church not only to pave the way for multitudes of pagan converts, but also to pave the way for large sums of money to line the silken pockets of the popes and the priests. You see, the fact is that the origin of Christmas is 100% pagan, and even the Roman Catholic Church that was behind the promotion of its observance admits to this as a reality. In the 1911 edition of the Catholic Encyclopedia, under the topic of Christmas, it is stated that Christmas was not among the earliest festivals of the church. The first evidence of the feast is from Egypt. Pagan customs centered around the January calends, which is the pagan calendar, gravitated to Christmas. Once again, clearly, Christmas has absolutely nothing to do with Jesus Christ because its observance was based off the Kalends, which was the calendar of pagan festivals and various time periods which were held by these idolaters as significant. However, if Christmas isn't about Christ, who and what is it about? Well, in ancient Egypt, as in Babylon, on December 25th, the pagans celebrated a festival in honor of the birth of the sun. The sun deity of ancient Egyptian culture was known as Horus, the son of Isis, and in ancient Babylonian culture as Bacchus or Tammuz, the son of Semiramis. However, this practice of deifying the sun, it did not end with the Babylonians nor the Egyptians but it was also adopted by the Greeks and the Romans. In ancient Rome, there was a festival that lasted for eight days from the 17th to the 24th of the month of December. This festival was called Saturnalia. During the eight days of Saturnalia, all manner of feasting, drunkenness, nonsensical revelry, and merrymaking took place, similar to the feast that was held in honor to Bacchus. On December 21st, the winter solstice, the sun reached its lowest angle in the sky. But on December 25th would occur the first observable day which the sun rose in the noon sky. Therefore, this day was celebrated as the birth of the sun god, whom the Romans called Mithra and held the feast known as Brumelia. The whole season was called Dies Natalis Invicti Solis, which is Latin for the birthday of the unconquered sun. This is why the 1944 edition of Encyclopedia Americana notes that a feast was established in memory of this event, speaking of Christ's birth in the 4th century. In the 5th century, the Western Church ordered it to be celebrated forever on the day of the old Roman feast of the birth of the soul, which is Latin for the sun. 
as no knowledge of the day of Christ's birth existed. And to justify this heinous act, the priests of the Roman church criminally took out of context the holy scriptures like Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2, which tells us, But unto them that fear my name shall the Son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings to deceive the people into believing that it was okay to adopt the pagan festival of the worship of the Son to now pay homage to Jesus Christ, because in the Bible, Christ is symbolized as the Son. And hence, the birth of the Mass of Christ, or Christ Mass. And this, my friends, is the real story behind December 25th and Christmas. Now the question is, when December 25th rolls around, what should we do when the entire world is celebrating Christmas? Well listen, most of you already knew that Christmas, Santa Claus, and the whole shebang is pagan. But what you should also know is that Christmas is the one time above any other point in the year when most people are open to hear about Christ. So use this time as an opportunity to share the truth about Jesus Christ with others. And instead of giving out vain gifts, give out gifts like books, CDs, and DVDs filled with saving truth. And when you tell people about Christ, let them know that he's no longer a baby in a manger, but he is now our high priest in the heavenly sanctuary seeking to cleanse all of our hearts from the disease of sin. For we are told in the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 34, Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that has died, yea rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Then in the book of Hebrews chapter 8 beginning at verse 1, the Bible tells us, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest, which is set at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ is our heavenly high priest. He is interceding for the sins we have committed in transgressing the law of God. But if we fix our eyes upon Jesus, we will have hope. Because the Bible tells us in the book of John, chapter 1 and verse 29, And the next day John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. If we allow Jesus Christ to cleanse us from our sin, if we allow him to be the ruler of our lives, if we allow him to govern our thoughts, our desires, our appetites, and our passions, he will save us from the curse of sin. And we need to grab hold of this great gift of salvation before it's too late. Because very shortly from now, the beast power will have control over this entire world. And we are told that when the whole world wanders after the beast, the only individuals that will be safe are those whose names are found written in the Lamb's Book of Life who was slain from the foundation of the world. Will your name be in that book? Will your family members' names be in that book? That is the question that should be at the forefront of our minds in this holiday season. And whether you like it or not, as always, the truth is the truth. <laughs>